Season two of the Pat and JT podcast. Oh my, now I'm here at last. The best time always gonna be the best. Come on. Exclusively on the Herd App Media Network. Right. It's Pat and JT, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And then 402 403 9478 and text us um, anytime. We appreciate you guys listening to our podcast that we've been doing for um, what, two over two years now? Two, over two years, yeah. I don't even know what. Oh, I have it. Oh, for Pete's sake, I have an echo. Oh, I don't hear an echo. Hold on just a second here. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is maddening. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now I hear the echo. Oh, I, that's what I'm hearing in my <clears throat> ear. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't this happen last time? Uh, yeah, it did. But we on the when we recorded when I edited it out or like afterwards, it, it, out. it was fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. So you couldn't tell we've been doing this for two years. But <laughs> glad we brought that. Up. Okay. Anywho, um, I'm looking on uh, Twitter and I'm wondering why I'm I'm echoing so bad I can't talk. Um, I was wondering why I don't see Meghan Markle trending, but then I see there's Oprah. Oprah's trending. Oh, Oprah, yeah, Oprah's trending. And uh, I heard something this morning that she's kind of stepping some things back uh, since the big interview last night in kind of not defending the queen, but kind of straightening some things out because some things were implied to be very critical of the queen last night in the episode. Yeah, it, it's kind of, and I have to say that uh, Megan and Harry were careful in the way they said said some things, but... There were some things that were said that were pretty damaging. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, they're, they're talking about the firm and they're, they're throwing out, you know, allegations of racism weird? and, you know, it's like, we all know, I mean, they don't, didn't have to say any specific names. We all know who they're talking about. The firm. The firm. I mean, come on. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I, and there was, there were some parts of it. And I tell you, I was trying to be as fair as I possibly can. Cause I mean, I'm not like a huge Meghan Markle fan, mm-hmm. but I know a lot of people are, and they, they see, you know, this, this fairy tale right. come true. Um, but what, as one person wrote, if Meghan Markle wants a war with the Royal family, mm-hmm. she's going to get it. Yeah. And I was like, Ooh, goodness sakes. And, um, some people bringing up, the fact that, you know, she, she was saying, you know, that when she's having her mental health problems, right. Mental yeah. health issues and that she was literally suicidal. I, I, and I'm thinking nobody could, nobody, you just beyond, I, beyond my grasp that nobody could help her. It, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it was weird, especially cause that was only what, three, four years ago. I mean, we were in, we were in the day, uh, it, we were getting to that point where reaching out for help was something you could do. And the fact that they wouldn't, it was pretty shocking if that is, yeah. the tr- if that is actually the truth. Cause she didn't even hardly, she didn't ask. Well, she, she tried to get help is what she was saying, but nobody would right. respond. Um, but just the idea, I never thought of, well, you go into the family, you have to give up your cell phone, your passport. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> My driver's license. What? I got- like at, at first blush, you think, whatever, I'm a Royal. I don't need, why do I ever need that stuff anymore? You assumed you'd just fly on a Royal plane and you just go to special Royal places where you didn't need all that stuff. So I wouldn't yeah. think anything of it. No, Personally. I'm, not, I'm not planning to drive anymore. I'm going to have a driver. Right. <laughs> so yeah, of course that's going to sound pretty awesome at first. And then after a while it gets, it gets old. Yeah. Um, yeah. Somebody too brought up about his mom, Princess Di, um, and how she was treated by the media and him saying that the media was getting so awful to them. I don't, I guess I'm, I didn't see it. I don't know. Cause I, I it seemed like the world was fascinated with them. Yeah. I, I um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things, just specifically addressing like the racial accusations, you know, yeah. that, that seems to me like to that, that doesn't, you see all this kind of stuff anymore. So hearing those things, that doesn't surprise me. Like, it's like, well, okay, it's a family that's rooted in history, a thousands of years of history. So it's going to be, and they're behind these big, huge walls and it's going to take a lot for them to change. So that's like, whatever, that doesn't seem too shocking to me. It's like, duh. But the other stuff, the mental health stuff and the, that, that's the stuff that shocked me. It, it did that. And the tabloids, that yeah. the, the I, and you all knew everybody knew there was an agreement with the with the the tabloids and we remember when the story was coming out about uh, Epstein wasn't it yeah Epstein or Harvey Weinstein one of those two and um, I can't remember her name from ABC that had the story and she said they were told nope we're going to shelve it because it will upset 
the firm, basically. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> because Andrew was involved with Epstein. Yep. That's what it was. And so there's this little little agreement where we give you exclusivity, you treat us well. Yep. Um, and then if somebody breaks it, then all hell breaks loose apparently. But, but I liked Oprah's response. I have to say she did ask some pretty tough questions. Um, I liked her response of what do you care? You're the Royals, right? What do you care about bad press? Nobody's going to take your job away. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Um, I know. It was interesting. And I, and somebody tried to compare, these are just posts that I was looking at and uh, comparing Princess Diana's situation, right? That's where I was starting to go with this. And I don't think you can really compare the two because Princess Diana was born into royalty. And I had to look it up real quick, but she, she first met Charles when she was 16. They got married when she was 19. He was dating her older sister. I didn't know that. Um, anyway, She was in the royal family already, and I don't know that she could have turned him down. He was 32 and needed to get married. Right. Yeah, true. I don't think she could have said no. Um, Just the way the family is set up and such. And whereas Megan, like she said, I gave up my career. I gave up. But that was your choice. Mm -hmm. Your family wasn't saying you have to marry this man. You know, it's part of being the Royals, you know, that, that yeah. whole deal. So I don't know if you can really compare Princess Di. No, I don't think so either. No, I, you're right. It's yeah, I agree. I agree. But it was, it was kind of weird. I'm, I'm not a huge, I was not a huge Meghan Markle fan. I'm not a bigger fan now because of it, but it seems like I, she came off likable last night. She did. She came <laughs> off likable and it, and serviceable, serviceable. Yeah. Um, so, William, William kind of came off as, um, Harry. Or Harry. Um, no, I'm talking about William. I was DMing William. No, uh, Harry. <laughs> Harry kind of came off kind of like a weenie. I know it. In a way, like, I mean, not, not, it had nothing to do with the mental health stuff, but it was Ooh. the, it It just seemed, I don't know. It was just weird. It was, was, it was just weird. Yeah. Maybe that was part of it? Maybe. I don't know. He could, he, would you have left? Would you have left if you hadn't met Megan? And he said, no, he couldn't have. Yeah. And I'm like, what? I was trapped and I'm thinking everybody to some degree is trapped in their situation Mm -hmm. that they're born into to to a degree. Um, And people make great strides to change their situation from the worst to the better. Right. Yeah. He was born in the best. Uh, Granted, there were expectations, but he was born into that. It's like somebody, a farmer's son who's born into farming. Right. Right. You're expected to help out on the farm. Right. Period. Yeah, and, and so maybe it, and maybe when he said he couldn't leave, maybe what he meant, like you said, with the farm, like if you don't ever have anything that comes into your universe that may just you, makes you change your trajectory or your way of thinking, you'll just always be a farmer. But if you meet some hot little actress that's like, hey, I want to do this, this, and that, and you're like, hey, that's kind of a good idea. Let's go. Maybe <laughs> then he goes. Then he gets off the farm and he whatever. <laughs> it, it, that, that's probably true. I just don't know that he had – do you think he'd even considered leaving <laughs> – prior to meeting her. And the reason why I ask is he says, oh, well, everybody thinks I was so happy and you see pictures of me smiling when I'm meeting people. I'm like, no, I'm thinking of the video of you in your hotel room in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, with your little royal swinging around. <laughs> yep, no, I know. I'm thinking, you look like you were having fun there. Yeah. So oh, that's what I was thinking of. But somebody else had pointed out to, you know, it's always been rumored that he actually was not Charles's son um, and is the son of, uh, wasn't it... Uh, the, one of the stablemen that worked with Diana is who he looks like he's a spitting image of. Um, yeah. And said that literally, if you were that, the, the, the child, you weren't, you weren't actually royal blood. You have no chance of being king. Zero. Um, and just say, you know what? I'm going to go start a podcast with a hot reality star. See you later. Done. Um, <laughs> I'm going to call her that media and start a podcast with a hot reality star. That's, that would be an easy <laughs> no brainer. We should reach out. Right. Like I would have done that in a heartbeat if I was if I knew that like my brother was going to be queen when my dad king. wasn't around or king, whatever. Well, <laughs> hey, you never know. It is 2021. Um, how, how dare you just how dare you just assume that. Um, so he I would totally be like, I'm not I have none of the pressure on me. I have all the money. I get all these ladies. I'm just going to go tear it up. Be an absolute I fool. I do. <laughs> 
So I don't blame him at all. I don't blame him all at all for playing pool naked in Vegas. I don't. Uh, all that stuff's like, man, he he tore it up when he could because when he had the chance to because he could. Exactly right, and and everybody loved him. Everybody yeah. was like, he was adored in the tabloids. Um, he was crazy. What he had, there was a nickname for him too, something Harry, and I can't remember. They called they had a nickname for him, but anyway, of course it was something Harry. But right. whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, it, it was just it's just so crazy to me because he's he's really trying to set himself up as being totally the victim. And then they were cut off. Yeah. And I do I do understand, though, his fear about getting cut off with security. Sure. Uh, because there there's a real threat as far as, you know, imagine if somebody kidnapped him. Right. You know. Well, but think th- that's right there shows how out of touch. And this is an obvious statement, how out of touch he is. As a royal, because you you're, you know this is going to happen. You know that's probably what's coming down the road. It's not like the queen just called up and said, hello, no security. You know, like you knew that was coming. So, and you have so much money, just pay for it yourself. Like pay pay for a security team. Like why do you I'm, need, why do you need, uh, whose house did he stay at? Um, um, t- Tyler oh, Perry. Yes. Stay at Tyler Perry's house to figure everything out. It's like, man, it they wasn't. His, they did use his security, Tyler right. Perry. So I wonder if it's just because he just doesn't, know how to take care of himself by himself like as a I don't a, think he has much money. Really? I really don't. I think all he had cuz they cut, they cut everything else off that was from the royal family. He only had the money his mom left him which wasn't a pittance. Oh, that's but, right. I remember them saying that. Yeah. But it's still that's why cuz everybody was framing it and Oprah kind of did address this that they left the family so they could go start their Netflix deals and, and go work for Disney. Yeah. And um actually that was kind of a mother of necessity situation where they, <laughs> they needed a job um to be able to afford yeah. the security at the very least. Yeah. So it's good. I mean it's good that they what if, if you could take everything that they said at face value and it is what it is and it's all true, I think they made the right decision and they're, they have their mm-hmm. own family here in the United States and there's not a ton of royal pressure and it's like it is what it is. And honestly, yeah. If you just take it at face value and if, if everything was true <clears throat> as they stated, I don't blame them one bit. Right. And I think we've even talked about that before too because yeah. it would be hell if you're coming in from the outside. Yeah. I don't think any peasant... <laughs> Would want to be in the royal family once they realize what that really meant. Right. No, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so but it was good seeing Mother Oprah back, though. Oh, listen to you. And I don't know if she's been doing doing interviews like this a lot lately. I it's been off my radar, but it was just it was like it was like grandma's soup. It was just warm, <laughs> comforting, fills your belly, makes you happy. I know. I know. She does. She asks good questions. Um, and it was funny. There was a meme going around. Uh, as this is all you need to know. And it was a picture of the three of them on that set or in that whatever backyard. And it just had written over the top of Megan and Harry. It just says wealthy millionaires. And over her, it says celebrity billionaire. That's all you need to know. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> right. They say relates to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> she had to learn how to curtsy though. I did. I did want to point that part out. And I'm yeah. like, come on. Yeah. You're I mean, Chris. yeah. And that, that seemed that it, some of the, the, some of those stories seem to be, uh, yeah, right. You can sword fight. Like you, you can sword fight because you were trained. You, so you can't curtsy. Give me a break. And and she says she never Googled Harry. And that's also BS. Bull. That is that's also BS. Just and because when you're going out on dates, I would assume whoever it is, you just Google them to see, and you're not going to Google Prince Harry. Really? It's like shut up. You're not going to even come on. Yeah, like some of these people, and I know this is again going back to my my Bravo love, but some of these reality stars that are on Bravo that end up getting married, like the Real Housewives or whatever, and the wives are like, oh, my husband doesn't even know what this show is. He just knows that there are cameras around the house. I'm like, shut up. They don't. They don't. It, that's not true. Or these guys like on Southern Charm that find a girlfriend or whatever, and they're like, oh, she never watched a show. She's watched one or two. It's like, shut up. If she hasn't, some of her friends have, and she's Googled it. She knows exactly what hot tub you're doing what in in season two. She knows all that stuff so don't try to say she doesn't she knows i just love that you're watching southern charm i love southern charm 
<laughs> I'm just not watching. I'm consuming Southern Charm. You're it's consuming awesome. Southern it's Charm. awesome. I love it. <sighs> so that run the, run the gamut. We just went from the Royals to Southern Charm. That's about about the same. About the same so, level. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys uh, text us, tweet us, let us know what you thought about Mother Oprah last night. Oh oh, it was very interesting. You can also text us at 402-403-9478. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, slide into our DMs if you want to. We appreciate it very much. Is your microphone hey, echo guys. gone now? No, it's still there. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'll send a tech person right over. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for listening, guys. Podcast, a Huda Media Production.